In this video, we're going to learn how to check whether a string is a palindrome or not using C++. So a palindrome is a string that reads the same backwards as it does forwards. A palindrome is a string that's the same as its reverse. So for example, if we have a string ABC CBA, this string is a palindrome because if we take the string and reverse it, we get back ABC CBA. But a string like race space star is not a palindrome. If we take this string and reverse it, we get back R A T S space E C A R. So we can tell just by looking at it that the reverse of race star is not equal to race star. If we imagine that we're a computer program comparing these two strings one character at a time, the first couple characters here, R and R and A and A, are equal. Once we get to this third character here, C, we can see that it doesn't match T, the third character in the reverse string. One approach to determining whether a string is a palindrome or not is to first find the reverse of the string, and then to compare the original string to its reverse to see if they match. The problem with this approach is that it's not very efficient. It's going to take some more work and more memory to find and store the reverse of the string. We don't need to do this though. All the information needed to determine whether a string is a palindrome or not is actually contained in the original string. We could just check to see if the first character in the string matches the last character in the string, and the second character in the string matches the second last character, and the third character in the string matches the third last character, and so on, until we reach the middle of the string. And if all the corresponding characters match, we would say it's a palindrome. If we find a character that doesn't match its corresponding character, we would say it's not a palindrome. So in the case of this string here, when we compare the first character to the last character, it's going to match. When we compare the second character to the second last character, it's going to match. But when we compare this third character to the third last character, we're going to find they don't match. And at that point, we would know that we don't have a palindrome. Let's implement this algorithm with a function that returns true if the string it's passed as an argument is a palindrome and false otherwise. So we'll have bool is palindrome and then string text. So the function is going to return a bool, either true or false. The function is called is palindrome and the function is going to accept a string as an argument. To implement this algorithm, we'll first make a loop. We'll say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than text dot length divided by two and i plus plus. So we're going to use the loop counter variable i to access the different indexes of the string that we want to compare. We're gonna start off i at zero and we're gonna increment it by one with each iteration of the loop. We're gonna stop the loop once i reaches the middle of the string where text dot length gives us the length of the string and when we take the length of the string in terms of the number of characters in the string and we divide it by two, that's going to give us the middle of the string. Next, we're going to compare each character at the front of the string to its corresponding character at the back of the string to see if they're not equal. If they're not equal, we know the string is not a palindrome and we can return false. So we'll say here, if text at index i doesn't equal text at text dot length minus i minus one. So if this is true, we're going to return false because we know the string is not a palindrome because we found a character that doesn't match its corresponding character at the back of the string. Now, if we go through all the characters up to the middle of the string, and we haven't found a character that doesn't match its corresponding character at the back of the string, then we can return true because we know the string must be a palindrome at this point. So this comparison here is probably the trickiest part of our code to understand. This left operand here is going to be the character at the start of the string. This right operand here is going to be the corresponding character at the end of the string. We take the length of the string and we subtract i and we subtract 1 to get the index of that character. 
So when i is zero, the first character we're going to access is the character at the length of the string minus one. That's exactly what we want. That's going to be the last character in the string. As i increases from zero to one to two and so on, we'll subtract it from this number. That's going to give us the second last character in the string, the third last character in the string, and so on. Let's trace through how this function works with an example. So if the string text is set to ABC, CBA, then we would have these indexes, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. The length of the string is 6. So we're going to have length of 6. The middle, which is going to be the length divided by 2, is going to be 3. And i is initially going to be 0. So the first comparison of that for loop is going to compare the character at index 0 with this left operand to the character at the index length minus i minus 1. Length is 6. i is 0. So 6 minus 0 minus 1 gives us 5. So we'll be comparing these two characters. A and A are equal. So the loop will continue. We're not going to return false. I will be incremented to 1. So now we'll be comparing this character here to this character here. And that's because 6 minus 1 minus 1 gives us index 4. Again, B and B are equal. So we're not going to return false. Now we'll compare this character here at index 2 to the character at the index length minus i minus 1. 6 minus 2 minus 1 gives us 3. Again, the characters are equal. So we're not going to return false. Now, at this point, when we increment i to 3, 3 is no longer less than 3. 3 is actually equal to that middle there. So because of that, the loop is going to stop, and we're now going to return true. And that's correct, because ABC CBA is a palindrome. So let's test this function out now. Down here, we're going to pass the test1 string to the is palindrome function. And if it returns true, which it should, then we'll output that the test1 string is a palindrome. We'll say is a palindrome here, followed by an end line. If it returns false, then we'll output that the test1 string is not a palindrome. So we'll say is not a palindrome, followed by an end line. And if we save this and run it, as expected, we get that the string is a palindrome. Let's test the function out with the test2 string now. So we'll copy and paste this, and now we'll say test2. And for our test with this string, we expect to get back that it's not a palindrome. So we'll save this and run it, and we get that this string is not a palindrome, again, as expected. So the function is working. One thing I want to point out is how the function is going to work if the string contains an odd amount of characters. So for example, let's make one more test string called test3. And here we'll have a, b, c, d, c, b, a. So this string here is also a palindrome. If we reverse the string, we're going to get back a, b, c, d, c, b, a. This character here in the middle, we're not actually going to check it because any character is going to be a match with itself. So in this function here, let's imagine now that we have ABC and DCBA as our text string. In this case here, we're going to keep following that process of checking the corresponding characters again and again until we get to the middle. But in this case here, what we have is a string of 
length seven. So the string has length seven. Here, when we have length divided by two, what's going to happen in C++ is what's called integer division. And seven divided by two is actually going to give us three back, which means at this point here, when we increment i to three, the loop is actually going to stop. We're not going to check this character here. And that's okay because we don't need to. This character here we know is equal with itself. There's no need to check it. Let's just try the function out to make sure it works. So down here, we'll copy this here and paste it here. And we'll give the function test three as an argument this time. So we'll save this and run it. And this time we get back that this string is a palindrome again, as expected. So this is how we can check to see whether a string is a palindrome or not using C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.